Tra-la! 11.03. Oh, 11.03. I know. What am I like? What am I like? Honestly, I've been faffing. Become as no surprise to you. And I've been faffing with technology. Bless. I have these hair brain schemes, you know. I do. At the 11th hour. Quite literally. The 11th hour. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you, my darling, for sending me that little thing. Haven't got any colour. It tells me now. So, hey ho. We'll go with the flow like we always do. Good morning, Pat Sprout. And good morning, Lynn Faulkner. <laughs> what am I going to borrow from you today, Lynn Faulkner? <laughs> I knew it was borrow and I thought... Yeah, I borrow and she lends, so never mind. Hey, it's me, you know, as I told. Good morning, Maria and Heather. Good to see you there. Heather, as is he? She doing okay now? Morning, Judith. Morning. Good morning, good people. Very good to see you all here again. It's a bit grim, isn't it? With the rain and the wind and dogs mortified. Jumping anyway, yes. <laughs> he is absolutely mortified. All will be revealed when you see that I'm scribbling, scribbling, scribbling. Um, it's still not what I want, but it'll do. It'll do. There we go. It'll do. So, how are we all? All right? Yes. It's good to see you. <laughs> oh, I know. I do make you laugh, don't I, Lynn? You see? This is why I'm here. I am the joy of your life. After Jesus, of course. After Jesus, yes, yeah. He's first. Good morning, Tracy. Oh, bless. Oh, dear. Poor Heather. Poor Izzy. And I bet Ben well, isn't home yet, is he? <laughs> this morning... Oh, no, last night, Heather, I don't know whether you saw it, but I put a post on to say, I really needed a cat box, and I was going to buy one. And then I thought, well, I only need to take her down to the vet because uh, they want to check her over because they've not seen her before. So um, that will be, the dog's got to go back as well for her ears. So no doubt that will be another 200 quid um, before, I, uh, plus the 300 that I spent a fortnight ago. Bless. So... Oh, I'm glad you're good, Hyacinth. Oh, bless you, Heather. You poor mum. Well, that's what us mums do, and mamas and GGs, great grandmas and great granddads. You know, we're there for you, all of you. So, you know, I'm sure she is exhausted, but she'll carry on. Our prayers are with you all, Heather, as they are with Anne Gamble. Our prayers are with you all. Good morning, our Claire. Nice to see you on here. Yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? When you get a couple of, um, when you have a couple of weeks off, it, it sort of, it gets you out of the sink of things, doesn't it? You know, myself included. But you are in our prayers, Heather. Do please uh, know that you are in our prayers. So here we are on a Sunday morning. Mm -mm -mm. We are. It's 11 o'clock, as I've said, me doing stuff at the 11th hour. And here I am again for a bit of a chin wag. It's nice when we can interact and chin wag together. For those of you that may watch at a later date and wonder who on earth is that woman. My name's Wendy Murphy, Reverend Wendy Murphy. And I'm minister at St Paul's at the bottom of Cotton Hill. And so, um, um, uh, yes, the one facing Tesco, is that's what I'm going to say. And it's great that we can connect, isn't it? Good morning, Anne. You're very welcome. And God is our refuge and, and our strength. But yeah, just keep hanging on. Um, June Smith, good morning to you as well. Good morning. So it's good to be with you all again. Though I've already said it's a bit of a grim day, which it is. Uh, never mind, because we've got our loves to keep our us warm haven't we those people who are doing for us in whatever way they can and of course us doing for 
other people. I hope if you've tuned in to the 10 o'clock service, you've enjoyed that. And speaking of services, we have recordings of this very service this morning. Uh, so if you'd like one, you can text me, you can email me, you can ring me, uh, you can inbox me on Facebook. So if you'd like a copy, a DVD copy that is, of this morning's service, we do have a couple spare because there are people who can't get online. So that's who they're for, really. The people who have no Wi-Fi. You know, so we're particularly thinking about um, who did they go to last week? Don Beeston and Bernard Bruton and uh, Derek and Kath Ellis have one as well. So bless. Good morning, Margaret Bowler. Good to see you. Good to see you. As I say, I hope you enjoyed that service. And if you've got anyone who you th who has a DVD player and you think would enjoy that connection of that that service, then please do uh, give us give me a call or call someone else, and they'll pass the message on. So, how are you, June Smith? How are you doing? Thank you, Margaret, for asking. Thank you. So. And just while we're waiting for June's reply, uh, I want to remind you about Colton Food Bank, open on Tuesdays and Fridays. As you can appreciate, that's really busy at this moment in time. If you have anything that you would like to donate, then uh, please do that on a Tuesday and Friday between um, 12 and 2. That would be great. And there's one at Netherfield as well. Uh, that's on 1.30 till 3 on a Wednesday afternoon. And the lovely Avril and Nikki will be there. Please don't forget to wear your masks. You're not allowed inside the building, but you still need a mask. OK, good, good. Because that's how we show our love for one another, isn't it? Yeah, I can do Don one. Um, Lynn, that is not a problem. So I can give it to you as I walk the dog, which is what I did last week. So that's great. Newsletters are on the way round as well. So um, everything in there, all your information is in there. It's just that if you think of somebody that we've not thought of, then that would be great. And we don't want anybody to miss out, do we? And not have that connection if that's um, at all possible. So... Oh, Pat Sprout, have you sent me an email? Goodness. <laughs> oh, bless. She's such an encourager. That's one of that's one of um, Pat Sprout's real gifting. She's a real encourager. Thank you. So I hope you enjoyed the ten o'clock service with Jeff and I. And, uh, oh, Pauline D, yes, she can have one too. So that's two out of the six that have gone. So that would be, um, that that would be great. And if anybody wants any more, then that's good. So I want to think a little bit about love today because, um, like I said, that's how, when we wear a mask, that's how we show our love for one another, isn't it? Because we want to keep ourselves safe, but most of all, we want to keep other people safe let me just see what june said so it's fine thank you going and waving every day but getting a little response very little response from mike i just need to get in there and give him a hug bless you darling yes you can have a dvd and hello georgina that's good to see you and um so yes i can pop them through when the newsletters come through so we've got a little band of people now that are doing newsletters so that is absolutely great um in the beginning to coin a phrase it was all very well and good when the dog was up for walking uh but it does take a long time it takes four or five days to deliver them all and we're up to 130 now so we started off with 100 again if you know anyone that you think would like um a, a newsletter and they're not on the list, then please do tell us. And you might think of someone who we've already got on the list, and that's absolutely fine. Oh, Lynn Faulkner. Just need to show you those. Because <laughs> thought they went very well with this frog. So there you go. 
bless you. And you, of course, June, are in our prayers. So as is Mike, as are all of you, we pray for everybody every day uh, because that's what we need to do. We need to hold each other up in prayer because that's another way we can love each other. I know it's great, isn't it, Heather? It really great. 130 we've gone up to, so that's fab. So one will be through your door too, Heather, at some point. So, um, yeah, a few banks have done. Oh, let me tell you, I don't know whether you were in that queue yesterday in your car, but I don't think there was much love going round yesterday. Uh, we went out and we went to Victoria Real uh, Retail Park. <laughs> it's about half past two. Do you know what? The world and his wife were there at half past two. So much so that Netherfield train lines, that's where we were backed up to. And so when you did that left turn going round the back road there, past Forrester, we were absolutely chock a block. And people were going over the lights at the loop road, the Collet loop road, and it was incredible. It had to be seen to be believed. It was a nightmare. It was. And all I'd gone out for, so you might say, well, were you doing essential shopping, Wendy? Well, actually, I was trying to find envelopes. You can't find any A5. They're not A3, like I thought. A5 envelopes. Well, well, well. So, uh, couldn't find any anywhere. Been to all the Wilco's. Wilco's have got nothing stationary wise. So maybe we've all gone back to letter writing, which is not a bad thing, is it? Not a bad thing at all. Thank you, Margaret. I think Jeff will be in touch with you about who's doing what and where and why for on what street. So that's great. Thank you, Margaret. So there I was in the queue and our guy was with me as well. Uh, in the passenger seat and I'm like I only want to go to B&M to see whether they've got any envelopes so obviously I did a quick right turn and I went off down to the next retail park you know where the Costa drive through is and that people queuing to get a drive through coffee whoa really there you go personally it's not my thing if I'm gonna have a coffee from anywhere like it or like it not what I'm going to say, but McDonald's is your best coffee. It's cheap as chips. And, well, nearly. And um, it's lovely coffee. Apparently they, they buy up all these particular coffee beans so no one else can get them, do McDonald's. But, yeah, if I was going to have a coffee, take away or otherwise, uh, I, would go, I would go to there. I, Costa's always, it seems, very, very um, bitter to me. And although I like a good glug of coffee, as Lynn Faulkner knows, um, I don't, um, I don't, what's the name, I don't, I don't, I don't like that, really, that makes you go like that, really. So, anyway, uh, I don't think there was much love going around there at all. All those people, were they really doing essential shopping? Oh, I don't know. I mean, we're still in lockdown, aren't we? And I know it was a bleak Saturday afternoon and I know lots of people go out shopping when it's raining because it's something to do to walk around the supermarket for an hour. But it didn't feel like there was much love being shared and cared for there. Not at all. Oh, thank you, Margaret. And I've ordered some online as well because I'm getting to the point where I can't scattle about for papers. So we've ordered some online, but that would be super, Margaret, if we could have yours. So you were down there, were you? Let me say Ben. Yeah, that's what people do, don't they? They park in the supermarket. Well, I weren't even prepared to do that, to wait in the queue. I mean, we'd already been 20 minutes in the queue because of the light changes. No, I don't think so. So here we are on a bleak Saturday afternoon, dashing out for essential envelopes. That's what we've been looking for. So I went up to the Costa Play and I went into Poundland. That makes me smile because Poundland isn't like the pound shop, is it? Poundland, we 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 parked up and we went into Poundland and um, it was we we got what we wanted. We got the envelopes, which was great. I mean, 
they were a pound and we got a few other things we put a few other things in the in the basket as well because you do don't you and it's not the pound shop it's pound land so some things are um are, are two pounds but still a bargain if you compare it to um tesco's or any of the other main one so still a bargain still a bargain so and now i'm not going to say any more about um people waiting in queues or not waiting in queues or because i'll be standing in judgment of people and we don't know people's circumstances same as we don't know when people um are why they're not wearing a mask do we so we just try and mind our own business and I'll hush my mush now for all those cars and all those people and uh, I'll leave the judging to God I think we can get ourselves in a bit of a pickle can't we if we're not careful it's really difficult at this moment in time knowing how to love one another isn't it for us as a church we do the pre-recorded services we do the newsletters we do these live don't we and i'd say we because you're here making it happen and uh, it was the same at 3 30 mainly because of the essential buying of a mcdonald's mcflurry it's absolutely mad mad really i won't thank you for a mcflurry really uh, uh not into all that but hey ho Hey ho, each to their own, and we're going to leave that there. So, how do we love one another then in these difficult times? Well, it could be a bit of shopping, couldn't it? It could be a bit of cleaning. It could be a telephone call or a text. If because someone can come in and clean if they're in your bubble, can't they? It could be a dog walk. Uh, our Kai's done a couple of dog walks with um, Ruby when I wasn't well enough uh, the other week uh, he was doing that because he shops quite well and he only goes to essentials he shops quite well and he does good good dog walk as well so so um, you might text someone you might email someone or put a card through the door uh, all those things aren't they they're all loving things to do because we're all sharing and caring for each other aren't we when we do these things we share and we care and we show our love for one another because Lynn has heard this many times from me because I talk about love being a doing word and I say she's heard it many times because I always talk about love in a wedding and a funeral service the love that people have given and in a wedding the love that will be in the marriage and I remind people that love is actually a doing word it is it's we it's we show our love by what we do so we can say can't we i love you we can say that a hundred times a day but if we're not backing it up with those deeds with those doings then it's pointless even though i love you slips off the lips quite nicely we have to be doing uh, the um the the doing we have to be doing the doing so there yes so it's no good just to say i love you and then go off uh, and then go off and um you know <laughs> sorry then go off and not not put that into practice love is a doing word and when we say we love someone we need to do something as well if we are able so I wondered if you knew how many times love is mentioned in the Bible. So in the first part of the Bible, which is the Old Testament, right? Because it's in two halves, isn't it? The Old Testament before Jesus, the New Testament uh, as Jesus arrives. He is the New Testament. He is the new covenant. He is the new promise. OK, so anyway, in the Old Testament, it's mentioned two. 140 times and here I want to remind you of the first commandment which is in the Old Testament it's love the Lord your God with all your heart mind and soul and love your neighbor as yourself 
So we need to start with ourselves, taking good care of ourselves so we can take good care of those that we love and be able to show them how we love them. So, uh, and then, well, I don't know about you, but that's a full-time job. I don't think I've got time to think about all the many reasons why people have gone up to um, Victoria Retail Park on a Saturday afternoon because it's a full-time job for me, loving uh, the Lord my God with all my heart, mind and soul and loving my neighbour as myself. And that just doesn't happen to me automatically because I'm a priest. Actually, I'm a human being as well. I'm only human. And when you, when I cut my finger, I bleed. It's true. I know you'll find it difficult to believe, but it's true. It is. So it's trying to do the best I can, the best we can, isn't it? Every single day. Then it, when we turn to the New Testament, how many times are we there? 551, you see, because Jesus is the new law. He's the new promise. He's the promise of love, right? Because God is love. That's why he sent Jesus, because he loved us so much. So he did a deed. He did a thing. He sent Jesus down to, uh, he, he sent himself in the form of Jesus, because we have God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, don't we? So Jesus came down because God had tried everything. He'd done lots and lots of things and he could see actually that the only way we were going to take any notice is if Jesus came. So God, Jesus, God with skin on, came down and helped us and told us about love. And here as well in the New Testament, we'll find, because Jesus was taught all the scriptures, wasn't he, of the Old Testament. So he repeats that, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind and soul, and love your neighbour as yourself. He repeats that in the New Testament, right? He passes that on to his disciples. His disciples pass it on to us. And if we're living the right kind of life, we will pass it on to those around us. Good morning, Supar. Good to see you. We will pass it on to those around us because God is love. Jesus, God sent Jesus because he loved us. And Jesus tells us how we can love one another, doesn't he? So he's been taught from the Old Testament scriptures and now he's giving us because he's the new law the law of love and which is why he got into all those scrapes with those Pharisees those folk who thought they knew everything yeah so that's why so the Bible in in its all of it right all of it the Bible all those pages there are all about love and so if we think about love that has many sides to it, doesn't it? So if we think about love, we have to think about forgiveness and kind and kindness and patience and gentleness and repenting. Because that's what we do when we say we're sorry, don't we? You know, but if we're sorry, we have to try very hard not to do that thing again, don't we? Because it's really important. You know, you've heard me say it before. You know, the kids say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They don't even look at you, do they? Sorry. No. I want a proper sorry. I want a sorry that looks me in the eyes and tells me I'm sorry. And when I see it in your eyes, I know that you're going to try really hard not to do that thing again that has upset me. And vice versa for me too, the other way. I'm going to look people in the eye and say, I'm really sorry. You know, I, I didn't do that. Or uh, I did do that because <laughs> it works both ways, doesn't it? So, you know, we've got repentance, we've got mercy, we've got encouragement, we've got our church family, we've got our own family, our human families. Am I saying that church isn't human? Leave that there. So we've got the spiritual warfare that goes on and, and it goes on in every church and every church family. So we have to be motivated by love. Love from God's kingdom teaches people about his goodness. So when we say God is good, he is good. He is. 
and that enables us to be good or to be our goodest. Another word that I've made up. To be our goodest on the best days. So when people experience all those things above, that makes them um, feel better, doesn't it? You know, if you've been, I, I often use this reading at weddings and uh, couples choose it. And I even use it at funerals, like I've said, because uh, Paul, he's a guy in the New Testament. He um, was telling the people of Corinth about what love is. And um, love is patient. Love is kind. You'll find this in 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonour others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered and it keeps no record of wrongs. That's not always so, is it? Because I think, and I speak from personal experience, love is the grind. Love is the getting up and doing the same every day, having the same conversation every day, even though uh, you've already said that once. And I wasn't paying attention. You'll know what I'm talking about, of course. But that's how we need to love one another. We need to find out what people's love language is. So Pete knows that the best way to my heart, my little love heart, is a seven salad with new potatoes. And I know that when he is speaking to me, he needs to see my face and have my full attention. Or he thinks that those women can do all sorts of things, can't we? And have a really deep and meaningful conversation. But that focus needs to be there. So we need to find out each other's love language. What makes us tick, don't we? We do, indeed. So I was looking at the Christmas adverts. Nearly finished now. Uh, and um, Aldis, because it's all about being together, isn't it? It's the desperation of families that want to be together for Christmas. And um, how we're going to be able to do that. Well, hopefully... We are, for those of us that are trying our best um, to stick to the rules. I mean, in Aldi's Christmas advert, I don't know whether you've seen them yet, but even the carrot wants to get home to be with the other carrots and he's risking a ride on a hedgehog to get there. Sainsbury's just wants everyone to be together uh, and boy or girl even. How very much we want that for ourselves, don't we? To be together. In all those adverts and in our daily lives, we're doing all we can for those we love, aren't we? Oh, the John Lewis advert. Yes. And um, that's lovely. I really like that. And then to top it all, um, when I'm uh, opening Facebook this morning, because sometimes I see posts and I like them or I love them even. Do you do you do that? Do you press love on, on the posts that people post? And my dear, dear friend Eileen posted one this morning. I thought that fits perfectly with what I'm going to say. So, without a dream, we reach nothing. Without love, we feel nothing. And without God, we are nothing. And you may have seen Eileen's post. It looks a bit like that. I'm sure she won't mind if you go on and have a look. It's on mine now too because I shared it. But I'm sorry that the heart isn't red. But I've tried to fill it in with red crayon in my usual creative self. So can you see? Without a dream, so without a hope, we can't reach nothing. Without love, whoops. We feel nothing. And without God, we are nothing. So I've coloured it in best I can. And I thought that was perfect um, to finish on because um, that was that's what the John Lewis ad advert is about, isn't it? It's about meeting people and finding something. Their love language, isn't it? For the snowman 
it was him going up. And it's just about those love hearts. How are we going to move those love hearts along? Without a dream, we reach nothing. Without love, we feel nothing. And without God, we are nothing. And the beautiful song that goes with that John Lewis advert, Give a Little Love. Heart shapes, that's what we need to be doing here, there and everywhere. That's what we need to do. Send heart shapes. Hang them here, hang them there, hang them wherever. Send them off into the wind. Not literally, because it's not good to have balloons in the sky. So, how are you going to deliver your heart today? Hmm. I'm just going to leave that there. Now, stay home. Because we are in a second lockdown. Stay home, please. Stay safe. And stay well. Don't forget to wear your masks, my lovelies, if you are able. Because you might have a very good reason why you can't. And we will love you with or without your mask. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. And all those that you love and care for and can't see at this moment. The Lord be gracious to you and give you his peace. And we ask for this blessing in the name of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take good care. Glasses keep falling off. Good to be with you. Happy to stay on for a few more minutes. If anybody's got any more comments, thank you, Eileen. Eileen's put a little love heart to you all. I'm sure you can read that anyway. Yeah. Good to see you, Hyacinth. Thank you, Tracy. Think about your little love hearts. And there's that lovely love heart that Eileen did for us as well. Um, and I would have, um, I would have actually uh, um, got that and done that. But it's really massive. It's really great. And it's really wonderful. So we um, we're very grateful and we're very thankful. We're very blessed to have Eileen. You're very welcome. Thank you, Judith. Thank you for your company. Thank you, Anne. And Kirsty as well. Stay safe, everyone, she said. Yeah, that's our love for each other, isn't it? Encouraging each other to stay safe. Don't keep nipping out because there's no need. Thank you, Marion. Good to see you all this morning. I hope you enjoyed the service. Pat certainly did. She sent me a very encouraging uh, email. So, you know. That's great, isn't it? Oh, you like my outfit today. The dress is a charity shop one. And because I've lost half a stone, I can actually get in it now. So, and I couldn't make my mind up what cardigan to wear. So I found this one and I thought, well, we're all blues, aren't we, and greens. That's why I've got my lovely earrings in look as well that my dear, dear friend Lynn makes. If you want some lovely earrings, Lynn Faulkner's your lady. She really is. Good to see you too, Lynn Hewitt. Um, Margaret is going to come and bring, you know, we're up to 130. Magazine, not magazines, are they? They're newsletters. What a wonderful balance between community and uh, church. It's just amazing. Thank you, Heather. You're beautiful too. You are. Absolutely. 
I know they are really lovely, aren't they? And I, and I was looking through, they're in, it's still in the little bag and I thought, oh, they haven't done an outing yet with this dress. That's what you do, isn't it? You chop and change things. I mean, I've got things in that wardrobe up there. And I'm like, oh, no, oh, more you for ages. You just found a different cardigan and you've got a new outfit. No, no, no. What we want to do, Pat, let, let's give people DVDs. Mark and Liz are more than happy to do DVDs. So if we have a bundle each week that can go out, that's great. Um, I would really love for the DVDs to go out because I think then it's a bit like the newsletter, isn't it? I'm a bit of a stickler for having hard copies. I know that lots of people want it on email. That's fine. That's great. It's not a problem if you want to do that. But actually, you know, people have said that they read it and then they pick it up after a couple of days and they read it again and they read it again and again and again. So that's all well and good, isn't it? It is. So that's great. I mean, because you see things, don't you? Uh, again and again, it's a bit like your Bible. When you pick your Bible up, you think, oh. Why haven't I seen that before? Well, you haven't seen that before, guys, because you weren't ready to see it. And then, whoo, Holy Spirit comes and you think, ooh. I know, I know, it's his gold. Well, when he sees this golden DVD, CD as well, that can go in his DVD player. Yeah, so, yeah, so DVDs all the way. Unless, of course, you, you can go, because, of course, you can pick this up on the loop on the facebook page you can pick up uh, the service on the facebook page uh, and you can pick it up on the website as well the services and me live but if you want something that's in your hand you know something you can hold on to then please yeah that would be great judith yeah yeah, I mean, we, we can probably pick a couple of D, uh, DVD players up, to be fair, after lockdown, of course. Um, although, I would consider them essential at this moment in time. So, yeah. So, um, you know, it, talk to me in a text or an email, because then it will sink in. Ah, you see, just before you dash though, Heather, what is it about? And the devil said to God, ha, 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 we've closed down all your churches. And God said to the devil, the buildings may be closed, but I'm in every home. So God bless you. And we will continue to pray for you, Heather. God bless everyone. Take good care. I'll see you Wednesday at 10. Hey, just before you go though, just before you go, no, you, you can dash Heather, that's fair enough. Um, that uh, remembrance that we did on Wednesday, it's always a we, isn't it? And I don't do anything by myself because you look at the, the poster that Derek did, uh, Martin Kerry came and put the two little Tommies by the side, um, the many sheds put the poppies up, uh, Phil Walker came so we could have the um, the the CD playing out, blasting out. So I have looked over the last couple of days, but certainly at the beginning of the week, we got over, no, after Wednesday, we got over 3,000 views. I don't know how that works. I don't know whether people are um, uh, just pressing the button and pressing off. I'm, I'm not bothered. Lots of people press the button and only stay on for a few minutes. That's fine. It's not a problem. Keep pressing the button and staying on if you can. Pat Sprout, enjoy your lunch. Take good care. Take good care, good people. I will speak to you soon. I will see some of you tomorrow evening on Zoom. And I will see the rest of you on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Take good care. Care and... 
Kaplas. See you Wednesday.